All right, our next assignment is to take our creature from assignment two and to move it into our fantasy landscape from assignment one. And the requirements of the assignment are that your creature takes up at least 25% of the whole composition, which might mean that you have to crop into your landscape a little bit. And it has a lot to do with lighting, not just on your creature, but also how your creature's presence affects the lighting in your landscape, like a drop shadow underneath, the temperature of the light, reflections, all those kind of things. We can also add in kind of textural elements, uh, mist, fog, snow, all that kind of good stuff. And we're going to create something new called an overlay layer so that you can see this and upload it. So this shows all the different alterations you made to your creature in order to sync it into a background. So how do we get started with that? Well, we need to go to our assignment one. Once your projects are clean and, and ready, the easiest way is to go to assignment one and go right to your PSD of assignment one, which has all of your different layers for it. Not your JPEG, because we're not just putting your creature as a sticker on top of your photograph. We are going to sync it into your landscape. So you need your PSD open, so we have all those layers. And then from assignment two, you need your finished PNG. And it might be the PNG that you just submitted, right? But you can also always output a new one from photo, Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and open up my assignment two in Photoshop two and make a new PNG because I had to shrink this one in order to put it on the photo bucket. And you want the highest resolution possible. Now we've all seen movies where this is done very obviously. So I think of a movie like Mary Poppins, and that was kind of the first feature film to use animation and live action together. And so what they're doing is they're compositing in animated creatures onto live action backgrounds. And in order to do that, the kind of genius of that film is they match the lighting. Even though it's just animated and pretty simple, they put shadows underneath the things to match the, the, the real life examples. So I'm just going to quickly Revisit assignment two, make sure everything is really nicely cut out. You know, that there's not little debris at the edges. That is, that's gonna be a pain for me later. Actually, there is a little bit of debris here, so I can fix that. I'm zoomed in pretty darn close here. But this is an opportunity for you to, to enhance assignment two, to make it better. I have a little bit of a, green background there I can edit out. And basically the key to compositing, and we're running into our final compositing projects, is having good, good source material to composite with. We've just created our own source material. So now that I've done that, I can save it as my assignment too, but then I can also save it as a new PNG. Also notice that I've cropped to it. So a lot of you could still crop closer to your image to save memory for the PNG because it's transparent anyway, right? So to save as a PNG, you just make sure you turn off all those background elements. Because a PNG won't be transparent just because. It's because you don't have anything in the background. <laughs> you know, it has to be a free-floating thing. And then you can't just write in PNG. You never want to write that in. Instead, I'm going to navigate to the desktop. You always want to choose it under Format. So the formats we've used so far out of Photoshop are the PSD format, the Photoshop document format the JPEG format when we want it flattened and just filled in as a rectangle, and then the PNG format when we want it to be flattened and um, made to go online and reduced, but supporting transparency. So it can have empty space behind it. Okay, now with our fantasy landscape, we want this file, and we want to remind ourselves a little bit about it, that has 
texture fills, just like Nayeli's digital honors presentation was showing us, has texture fills on it. Maybe. It has foreground elements, background elements, middle ground elements, you know, all composited together to give us an image. Remember, we didn't create any of these images. We pulled them in from other places, but we altered them, we changed them, we transformed them into an original vision based on our own sketch. We added reflections. We might be able to make little corrections as we do more and more with it. Turn that off. Okay, so now I can take that PNG that I saved out of Photoshop at full resolution, and I can drag and drop it in. And it should be nice and big, right? Because we're working at around 11 by 14 inches at 350 pixels per inch. So I can just put him right there in the center, right where he's placed, hit return to place him, and then I can move him with command uh, right bracket up through the layers. So now he's on top of everything, down through the texture fills, and then down behind the foreground element, right? And down into the background until he's completely covered up. So the first thing I wanna do is maybe play with how deep do I want him in the image? And it makes sense to maybe have him behind the background element and in the middle ground. But then I have to decide with Command T, okay, where do I want to place them and how big? And I can think about like flipping and I can think about how I want him to interact with this environment, right? And I can duplicate and always bring him in again and try some, some different options. See, I can't decide if I want to flip him or not. I think I might want to. And you don't even need to have all of your creature on the landscape if you don't want to, but you want it to take up at least 25% of the landscape. Honestly, I think here is probably a good placement for my composition. So I want to see a little bit of those hands and I want to see more of the eye. And then I can probably play with deleting some elements from this foreground, right? But that kind of sets into the perspective well. Notice it doesn't quite work with all the texture fills right now. It makes him look too washed away in the background. But if I take those off, well, they, yeah, now that's starting to work a little bit better. So we are gonna alter, alter this quite a bit. And we're gonna learn how to use an overlay layer to kind of make it all sink in. So for now, let me keep it pretty basic. I've set the character in there. I might even alter, I'll make a duplicate of the coral here and just play with shrinking that foreground element a little bit because it doesn't need to be such a focal point anymore. And that's already looking a little bit better, right? Now, of course, we don't want to change um, our assignment. We don't want to overwrite assignment one. So instead, I'm now, once I've placed my creature in it in any way, and I'll mark that creature as violet, or maybe it's blue my creature layer, I'm keeping it as a smart object so I can't accidentally edit it yet. And now I'm going to save this with a new name. So save as assignment three. And now instead of fantasy landscape or fantasy creature, this is now a creature. Okay, so we have placed it, but there's a lot more to this assignment now. And that's what we'll do with the next videos we are going to need to make this creature match the lighting of this environment. And we are going to do that through dodging and burning and through an overlay layer. And we might also be adding some other effects and changing the environment a little bit. 
We might have it splashing some water. You know, you, you never know. Like, how is it integrating? How uh, deep are these feet into the water? That kind of thing. So right now he's just kind of sitting on top of everything. But I have him placed. And so that's a good start. If I turn on these other things, <laughs> I can already start dialing some of them back. All right, so now I've got assignment three creature scape. I'm going to save it, and that's what we'll work from. And that's where we'll start next time. And remember, the most important thing is to have that creature nicely cut out so that you don't have to do a lot of cleanup that's unnecessary because we're going to be doing a lot of kind of zooming in and working on it. And it's going to help improve our creature and our landscape to, to do all these steps. All right, until then.